Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and in this video, I'm going to continue our series on Affinity Publisher and how to create printed material for photographic business or project. In the previous video, we started to explore some of Affinity Publisher's more advanced text and design tools, and this time, we're going to take it a step further and design a leaflet for our fictional photographic business. Leaflets are simpler to design than you might imagine, both in terms of their layout and their physical form. You can print them yourself or get them printed commercially. Our design uses a single sheet of A4 paper in a landscape format with two vertical folds to produce what some would call a trifold leaflet in that it offers three vertical panels or pages on one side and three on another. Actually, you can fold this a couple of ways using a zigzag or a Z fold or a roll fold where the right and left panels fold over the center panel. In both cases, the front of our leaflet or its cover will be the rightmost panel on the front. Here's our finished leaflet so that you can see how it's laid out. We've already introduced text frames and picture frames in previous videos in this series and our cover is based on many of the elements we used in our previous poster design. But you will see something different. Over in the left sidebar, you'll see that our leaflet has two pages, one for the front side of the sheet and one for the rear. Now, so far, we haven't talked about master pages, but we're going to use them here. The pages panel has two sections. The lower section is for actual document pages, but the top section is for master pages. Anything you add to a master page will appear on any document pages that the master is applied to, and this can include photo information, text and picture frames, and more. Here's a closer look at our master page. Uh, incidentally, simply clicking a page in this panel just highlights it. To view and edit a master page or a document page, you have to double click it. Our master page needs two vertical guides to split the page into three vertical panels in the printed document. We've used guides in a previous video, but just to recap, you first need to display the document rulers via the view show menu command. Then you can drag vertical guides off the vertical ruler on the left and drop them into position on the document. We're printing on A4 paper in landscape format. This is 297 millimeters wide. So we need to drop vertical guides at 99 millimeters and 198 millimeters. Now we have three vertical panels and already our leaflet is starting to take shape. So how about some branding for our master page? Remember, this will then appear on any document page that uses this master page. Having the photographer's name and contact information at the bottom of each panel would probably be a bit much. So we've just added it to the base of the right hand panel. You'll see we've also added some picture frames. Two of the panels have square frames, while the third, remember this will correspond to the front cover when folded, has a much taller picture frame. Now, when you're working on actual document pages, these picture frames will be there and ready for use. You don't have to use them. You can create new frames on the page that cover them up if you want to. But if you want a consistent layout across your documents, master page templates are the way to do it. Back in our document, we can see how this works. Our first page is based on the master A template above by default, because that's the only one we've got. If we set up another master page design, we could choose which one to apply the current page by dragging that master from the top panel onto our page. Right, so let's go back to the start and assume we haven't yet added any content to our leaflet. So let's set about adding content and designing it. So however we fold it, the right panel will always act as the front cover. So that's where we'll start. To save time and effort and maintain the visual consistency of our brand, let's use many of the elements from our poster design that we made in the previous video. First, we'll add a photograph. We already have a picture frame ready and waiting because that's on the master page. So all we need to do is select it and use the file place command to locate and add a photograph. This will automatically be scaled to fill the frame, though you can move the image within the frame using the move gadget that appears when you move the mouse pointer over the picture. There's also a scale slider underneath. For the title, we'll use the same trick as we did for the poster, using artistic text that we can resize and align easily above a rectangle with a fill color so that the text is visible over the picture. We'll also use our device of placing a logo graphic on a white circle. 
In fact, the simplest way to do this is to select these items from the poster design and then copy and paste them into this document. If you haven't seen the poster video yet, take a look. You can jump to the part where we create this banner text and graphic to see how it's done. Our leaflet cover is much smaller than our poster, so these pasted items are too big, but because we used artistic text rather than frame text, everything is easily resized to fit. We've made a couple of changes to the text in the heading to reflect the fact that this is a generic leaflet rather than publicity for a specific event. This will upset our careful text alignment, but because it's artistic text, we can simply drag the corner handles of the text frames to resize them and line them up. Maybe we'll change the font for the word photographer too and choose a lighter weight just to provide a bit of visual contrast. Below this heading, we'll add a text frame to list the type of work our business does. When it's just a few lines like this, it doesn't make much difference whether you use frame text or artistic text. Frame text might be a little easier to edit, but artistic text gives you more design control. We'll add one more thing from our poster design, our red call to action flash. This is a circular shape made with the ellipse tool and colored a solid red via the swatches panel in the right sidebar. We've also added a drop shadow effect with the FX button in the layers panel. The white text is in the text frame positioned over the top. As your layouts get more complicated, you will need the layers panel to keep the page items stacked in the right order. And you can use the layer group menu command to keep items grouped together that need to stay together so that you can move them around as a single object. So that's our leaflets front cover done. What about the rest? The thing about leaflets is that they're not printed just on one side of a sheet, but on both sides. Right now we have a front cover and a couple of panels which will probably appear on the back, depending on how the leaflet is open and read. Let's use these for a little background information about our photographic business. We'll use one panel as a kind of about me section and the center panel to list some of the services offered by the business. These are basic text frames using the same Avenir Next font used throughout our documents and with point size large enough to make them clearly legible. As we have done throughout, we've set this document up to use linked graphics. You'll find this option in the file document setup panel and the document tab. With linked images, you're using a single external image file rather than embedding it multiple times in different documents. This doesn't just reduce the document size, it means that if you decide to change your logo, for example, you can open the original file, edit it and save the changes, then update all the instances where it's used in all your documents. Well, let's see how this works. If you use the window resource manager command, you can see a list of all the resources used in your document and whether they're linked or embedded. The key point is that if you've modified your logo externally, for example, it will show up here as needing to be updated. This makes it so much easier to keep your graphics consistent and up to date across all your business documents. Right, so let's get back to our leaflet. Our first page is essentially the front cover and two panels with some basic business information. The real meat of our leaflet will be the inner panels and for this we need to create a new page. So in the pages panel, click the add pages button, choose how many you want, in this case it's just one, and click the OK button. You will see that Publisher has added a new blank page directly below the first. Of course, it's not quite blank because it has the ready-made panel guides, picture frames and footer text from the master page, so we've already got a bit of a head start. And here, We've added content to these inner panels, using the picture frames already on the page and adding our own text frames for the information below. We won't go through every item step by step because we've covered placing images and using text frames plenty already. We have used one new tool though, and that's Affinity Publisher's Table Tool. You'll see there's a dedicated Table Tool in the Tools panel on the left, and once it's selected, you drag out a table on the document in the size you want. Publishers tables work just like those in word processors like Word, Pages or Google Docs. So we won't go into any great depth with these because they work in just the same way. You can double click a table to start typing in it, click and drag to select cells for formatting and use the little drop down menus in the row and column headings to add or remove columns. 
We've used our table to show some dates for specific events, but do think ahead. If you're designing a leaflet for generic use way into the future, anything that references a specific date can quickly render your leaflet, well, out of date. And you don't know how long your customers will want to keep these things. Finally, with all the design work done, we need to think about printing. If you're using a commercial print bureau, check first to see how it wants the document presented and in what format. One of the key questions is whether you need to allow for margins around the content on your pages or whether you can use a full bleed design where images and graphics go right up to the edges. We've designed our leaflet so that objects do go right up to the edges. In the real world, if you are printing a full bleed design, they should extend just a few millimeters beyond the document edges to allow just a little printing leeway. If you're printing on a home printer, you do need to work out if you want to print with margins or without. Many home printers can do borderless printing, but often only on more expensive photo paper, which might not fold too well without scoring. If you're printing on regular paper, you'll need to allow for your printer margins and adapt your design accordingly. You'll also need to print on both sides of the sheet. Some printers offer double-sided printing, but you may need to use the double-sided print options drop-down in the Publisher Print dialog to get the second page to print the right way up. The alternative is to simply feed the page back into the printer the other way up to print the second side. So that's it for our leaflet project in Affinity Publisher. It's been a bit of a marathon, but it's introduced a whole lot of useful stuff for pro photographers designing their own business stationery and promotional materials. In the last video in this Affinity Publisher series, we'll look at how you can take your pro photographer knowledge and turn it into an ebook for sale or for training material for your customers. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.